All right, in this lesson we will continue practicing simplifying expressions with exponents. Many of our exponents will be negative exponents. All right, when you have a fraction raised to a power like this, um, you're just going to do the power to both of these things. So this is going to be 16 over 25. All right, looking at number two. Well, um, I was trying to think if there was any reason not to multiply these together. I don't see any reason not to. So five times two is 10. So that makes this 10 squared. And uh, of course, 10 squared is 100. So that's the answer number two. Well, anything to the zero power is one. So there's that. Okay, um, if you have a negative power, as you know, that means um, we have to move this to the other side of the invisible fraction. So um, this is going to become seven squared in the bottom. And uh, so that means in the top I'll need a 1, so 1 over 7 squared. We decided if it was um, squared or cubed, we would go ahead and do it. Anything higher, we can leave it. Um, but so 7 squared is 49, so we should do it. Okay. Um, Remember that if you raise a negative number to an odd power, it stays negative. So at the end of the day, this is still going to be negative. Um, but 2 to the third power is 8. And 3 to the third power is 27. So this will be negative 8 over 27. Okay, the key is the negative stays. If this had been um, an even power, like two or four, the negative would have gone away. Okay, um, remember about this, you guys. When you have a negative power on a fraction, the easiest thing to do is uh, do the reciprocal. So um, the reciprocal of one fifth. Uh, would be 5 over 1, right? And then I could make it a positive 3 power once I do the reciprocal. But of course, 5 over 1, we don't really need the 1. So we'll just put 5. So now I've got 5 to the third power. Now, we agreed that um, if you square it or cube it, you should go ahead and actually do it. Um, and you should memorize that 5 to the third power is uh, 125. Um, you will be allowed to use a four function calculator. So, five times five times five, you could do that on a four function calculator if you needed to. Anyway, number seven. Okay, yeah, number seven. Notice this negative sign is not in the parentheses, so watch out for that. So inside the parentheses here, I've got 20. OK, so now be careful. Order of operations. Um, do I make this negative first, or do I square it first? All right, this negative is like a negative 1. Um, so we definitely are going to square the 20 first, and then put the negative sign on it. Now, 20 times 20, which you could do on a four function calculator if you needed to, 20 squared is 400. Okay, so that negative sign is still going to be there. So this will be negative 400. Okay, so I, I need you to notice that the negative does not go away because it is not inside the parentheses. Um, okay, let's put a box around that. Box it up. Okay. 3 to the 0 power is 1. Okay, and 1 times something is not going to change anything. So, really, uh, f for a second now, I have 5 to the negative 1 power to the negative 3 power. 
So when you raise a power to a power, you multiply. So this will be um, 5 to the positive 3 power. Okay, negative times a negative is positive. And we just did this um, a minute ago. 5 to the third power is 125. Okay, if you forgot that, you could use a four function calculator and go 5 times 5 times 5. Okay, number 9. Um, simplify each expression, blah, blah, blah. No variable equals 0. Write your answer with positive exponents. Okay, so we got to be careful. Got to be really careful with these. Um, notice that the, uh, the 3, the 5, the 4, these are all inside the parentheses. Okay? Um, so, what am I saying to you? So, it's like we have this, all right? We really don't need the parentheses. We have negative a to the third power times negative a to the fifth power times negative a to the fourth power. Okay, the parentheses aren't really doing much. Um, so, the question is, what's going to happen to these negatives? Now, understand this. Um, even this negative over here with the a to the fourth power, this fourth power is not going to make this negative go away somehow. It's not inside of parentheses. Okay? Um, the, so the four that when there were parentheses, the four is in the parentheses. Like it's not outside the parentheses like this. Okay, it's in there. So um, right inside of here, there are no parentheses like between the. Uh, hopefully you get it because I'm not doing a great job of explaining it. Um, anyway, so th even this negative with a even power is not going to go away. So here's what we have to ask ourselves. When we get to multiplying these together, will it go away then? Um, so think of it like this. Every one of these negatives is a negative 1. Negative 1, negative 1. So if I do negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, is that going to be negative or positive? Well, there's an odd number. There's three of them. So I know the end result is that's going to be negative. So this negative is going to stay because there's an odd amount. Um, if there had been an extra one, like say if this had been times negative a squared, okay, now it would be positive, all right, because negative times a negative is a positive, and another negative times a negative is a positive. But if you have an odd number, then a negative times a negative is a positive, times a negative is back to negative again. So it's going to be negative. Now, um, as far as the variable, it's going to be a to the, and I'm adding these up. 3 plus 5 is 8, uh, plus 4 is 12. So this is going to be negative a to the 12th power. Okay, so it's a lot of explanation for a simple thing. The negative won't go away. It's not in parentheses. Okay, now this is uh, one of the ones that we do really well at. I'm going to recopy it because it looks a little fuzzy and hard to read. This is x to the negative 3 power times y to the negative 1 power over y squared. Okay, now everything that has a negative exponent has to move. So we've got x to the negative 3 power. That's got to drop down. OK, and we've got um, y to the negative 1 power. And that's also got to drop down. So here's what's not moving anywhere. OK, let me move over a little. The y squared is going to stay put. So when the x to the negative 3 power drops down, it's going to become x to the positive 3 power. When the y to the negative 1 power drops down, it's going to become y to the positive 1 power. Or I could have just left it as y without the 1. 
Um, so there's nothing left in the numerator, so what do you think I'm going to do? Um, hopefully you guessed it. Um, I'm going to put a 1 up there. Okay, so now I can clean this up a little bit because of the y's that go together. So y squared times y is y to the third power. So that's why the final answer, whoa, that's a highlighter pen. The final answer is going to be 1 over x to the third power, y to the third power. That's the answer number 10. All right, number 11. Um, I've got, hold on. I've got 5, and I've got negative 3, and I've got this negative sign, which is like a negative 1. Maybe I should put the 1 in there. All right, it's a negative 1. So I have 5 times negative 3. That's negative 15. Negative 15 times negative 1 is a positive 15. So there you have it. I'm going to have a positive 15. All right, next, let's do the r's. So I've got r to the third power. I've got r, and I've got another r. So that's r to the fourth power, fifth power. So r to the fifth power. Next, let's do the s's. So I've got s to the fourth power, s squared, and s. So that's four, six, seven s's. So that's going to be, stop it. That's going to be s to the seventh power. So that will be the answer to number 11. OK. Now this one, uh, again, I think I'll recopy it just to make it a little bit more clear. All right, it's not that bad, but so what we have here is we have three over two, and then I've got a to the fourth power, I've got b to the fifth power, and up here I've got b to the third power, now I skipped this one because I wanted to change the color. All right, I've got a to the negative two power. All right, that one's special because it has that negative power. I'm gonna have to deal with that. And then I've got this negative five power as well. So look at all these negative powers. I'm gonna have to do something with that. Well, as far as the a to the negative two power, we know that's gonna have to drop down. So if I do that part, see do I have room over here? Um, so I'm going to have the rest of it. Everything in black is going to stay where it is. So I'm going to have 3 over 2 and a to the fourth power and b to the fifth power and b to the third power. And I still have my negative 5 power for now. Okay, but the a to the negative 2 power, should have left a little more space, is going to drop down and become a squared in the bottom. OK, great. So um, that means that what's going to happen is I will have, so I still have 3 over 2, but um, together these make a to the sixth power. Now, I'll look at the b's. OK, look at these b's. All right, these b's are going to cancel out, but not all of them will cancel out. The three b's in the top will cancel out three b's from the bottom. So in the bottom, that's going to leave behind b squared. All right, always simplify whatever's on the inside before you do anything else. So now we've made the inside as simple as possible. We took care of the A's and the B's. Um, so now it's time to deal with this negative 5 power. So remember, um, remember that if you have a negative exponent on a fraction, the easiest thing to do is to do the reciprocal. 
and make it a positive power. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so if I do the reciprocal right now, then I'm going to have, all right, the denominator is going to become the numerator, 2a to the 6th power v squared over 3. Okay, and now it's a positive 5 power, all right? Once you do the reciprocal, it becomes positive. Now I can take this 5 power and apply it to each thing. Now, as far as the 2 and the 3 go, okay, um, remember, if we do anything bigger than cubic, um, I'm saying you can leave it. So, 2 to the 5th power, we can just leave it as 2 to the 5th power. Now, these variables, we're going to, a power to a power is when you multiply. So, we will have a to the 30th power and we will have b to the tenth power and again in the denominator you can just leave it three to the fifth power so that is going to be the answer for number twelve okay number thirteen let's do this first because See how it has a power on the outside of the parentheses? Let's deal with that. Um, so, if we, a uh, power to a power is when you multiply. So this is gonna give us r to the 10th power and s to the 15th power. Okay, so we dealt with the yellow part now. Now the black part, is just going to come down unchanged. So I've got r to the fourth power and s squared. Okay, we're still just multiplying. So um, look at the r's. Let's deal with the r's now. Okay, so um, r to the fourth times r to the tenth, uh, that's r to the fourteenth. Alright, now let's deal with the S's. So that's going to be S to the 17th power. 2 plus 15 is 17. And that's it. That's the final answer. Okay, this one's a little different. So you have, we have this like addition and subtraction in here. Um, so this is good old distributive property, for one thing. Um, whoops, I almost missed a spot. So if we do the distributive property, so we're going to have, um, the 6 is going to sit there, but x squared times x, that's x to the 5th power. Okay, and then on this one, I'm doing x squared times x to the negative 2. But look, um, 2 plus negative 2 um, is 0. So that would be x to the 0 power. But anything to the 0 power is 1. So this is really just 3 times 1, which is just 3. So essentially, th those cancel each other out. Um, but moving on, now I have x squared times negative x. That's negative x to the third power. Okay. And then I have x squared times 10, so that'll be plus 10x squared. This is essentially the answer, but we are supposed to write this in descending exponential order. Okay, standard form. Um, so we will start with the highest power, x to the fifth. And then the next one down is negative x to the third power. And then after that, we have 10x squared. And then finally, we have plus 3. So this would be the answer to number 14. Oh, all right, you know, it turns out that was it. There are no more, more problems. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. I will see you on the next video. Remember, if you're watching this, you're one of the good ones.